We're going to talk about ergonomics, stance, and grip today. The first thing is obviously holding the chainsaw. You want to have your left hand forward and your right hand to the rear with thumbs wrapped around the handle so that you don't create a seam that the saw could uh, kick out. Uh, you also want to utilize the, the thumb muscle, which is very strong, uh, to help minimize some of the weight of the saw when you're running it. Ergonomics is a fancy word for a simple concept, meaning that we design the chainsaw to match the human body. If you look at the handles, they're at a seven degree offset such that when I go to cut, it keeps the saw to the right side of my body, more out of the plane of my body, so there's less chance of impact. It also forces a boxer position, which allows me to keep the saw very close to my body, um, which is a lot safer. For every inch you move that chainsaw away from your body, it increases the load on your lumbar and load cre creates fatigue via uh, a chance of injury. So the left leg forward, the right leg receded, thumbs gripped around the handles, locked down. Chainsaws have two speeds, full speed and at idle. So when you're cutting, you want to run it at full speed. This stance also uh, minimizes the reactive forces of a chainsaw. A chainsaw creates three reactive forces when you're cutting. When you put it down on the wood, the tendency is to move away from the operator. So your body anchors that so you're not using your muscle mass to do so. You don't want to be pulled over the top to where your left hand or something could get in the way of the chain. So this anchor position does really nice to anchor you in and defeat that reactive force. When you cut on the top of the bar, the tendency is to push into the operator. Again, you're letting the stance, your boxer stance, anchor that, minimize that energy. When you touch the top corner of the bar, that's the third reactive force. We call that kickback. And we always want to manage that. We never want to touch the top corner of the bar. If that happens, literally the chain stops to which the bar is thrown in the radius of the plane. A mechanical activation of chain break occurs and it gives you some reaction time to move the saw away from you. What's happening by that is as the saw comes around the top corner, you can see how much of a bite takes, uh, goes into the chain. And it stops the saw from running, and in turn, Newton, when he got beamed by an apple, figured out for every action of energy, there's an opposite and equal reaction. It's going to throw that saw in the radius of the plane that you're holding it. So such, the top corner here is going to create a mechanical activation. However, if you're in a felling position, that saw would stop and go. Uh, it's going to be winging out there somewhere around where you don't want it to be. So we've integrated what's called an inertia activated chain break into this saw. When the saw is running, if you hit the top corner, it kind of mimics just dropping the saw down on the corner like that, such that it stops the saw. Inertia throws the weighted handle forward, and it's going to actually stop the saw from running so as it would be moving away from the operator it's going to be uh, stopped and locked in and a lot less uh, chance of injury.